held it was called the Personal Rights in Defense of Education. So if you spell that out, that's pride, bitch. So pride was started right here in this parking lot where you stand. So you are a part of history by being here tonight. So thank you all so much again. Don't forget to get those raffle tickets. We have many more prizes to give away, including a special raff raffle after our next performer. And you guys, I'm vamping because this next performer is a personal hero of mine. She's been a groundbreaking force in comedy, entertainment, and activism for decades. Known for her fearless, unapologetic humor and unwavering advocacy for the LGBTQ rights, she continues to inspire generations to live their truth. From her stand-up specials to her roles on screen, she's a true icon of authenticity and empowerment. You all know her, you all love her. Put your hands together and stand the fuck up for Margaret Cho! Lauren Banal. Lauren Thank you, thank you, Emily. That was beautiful. That, yay! Hi, why are you so far, girl? You want to guess the color of my underwear? You want to know what I got going? Don't guess, I have IBS. Girl, you don't want to guess. Okay, it's brown. Okay, did you register to vote? Yeah. Bitch, you have to register if you haven't registered shit. And then when you register, you make sure that you get on ballot tracks because they will tell you when, if you're gonna vote by mail, which you, you definitely do it, get, get your vote in, but like, they, if you do ballot tracks, they will tell you when they sent it and then we, they'll tell you when you should have got it and then they'll tell you when they receive it. So they will tell you everything. And so I'm just, you, cause Kamala has to win. She, bitch, she has to win. She, yes, bitch, you, because if not, we're all going to some kind of a camp. You, you know they're going to put us in a camp, and I can't, you know, we can't. We can't, we can't go back, and we have, she has to win. I think it's just so, I think it's all so crazy that it's so close, too. Like, it's a fucked up thing that this election is as close as it is, as it is but Donald Trump really, he needs to go to prison. Because, girl, because orange is the new orange, and I'm... <laughs> It's like, what is this? It's not even politics. All people do now is say, did he shit his pants or not during that? <laughs> like, we're, they're, we're like listening for the audio to see when he farted. And it's just like not like, I just don't understand like why it's close. It's so weird. We can't have him as president. He can't even blend his foundation into his hairline. <laughs> like, bitch, your ear is part of your face. Your mostly unharmed ear needs to be covered by that foundation, which isn't even the right color. It's a little warm for you. We need to go to a Sephora and color check that foundation. It's also a little bit greasy. I think it's too high coverage. But it's like his ear is like not even harmed at all. Like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is up with the ear? Like, any fucking queer person knows that if you get a cartilage piercing, you are not sleeping on that shit for two years. How is his ear totally fine? It's all fucking crazy. And I, I just, I'm glad that we're having this event today to honor National Coming Out Day. That we are here, that we are queer. I guess I will tell my coming out story. So I uh, came out as a lesbian. Yes, as a lesbian when I was 12 years old. And I grew up in a gay bookstore. My parents owned a gay bookstore in San Francisco, and I was surrounded by gays and lesbians. So it was very safe for me to be out. And then when I was in my 20s, I came out as bisexual. And my parents were like, oh no, 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 there's only gay and straight. Only gay and straight cannot, cannot be. You know, they doubted me a lot. My parents doubted me a lot. Like when I, I wanted to be a comedian when I was 14 and I told my mother I was gonna be a comedian and she said, well, maybe it's better if you just die. <laughs> so they doubted me. But I still, I said, I started off as a lesbian. I was a butch, I was real, I was butch. Like I had like, re, like the thick, thick motorcycle boots. I still have the boots, but I don't have the cargo shorts. We had, lesbians always have a cargo pocket 
filled with carabiners and balls made out of rubber bands. I love a butch like that. I want a real, I want a woman who's, I want a real butch. You know the kind of woman who rolls her own tampons? <laughs> My dream woman is Guy Fieri. Like, I want a butch lesbian. Like, I just, I love a butch woman, and I just, I, I love, I, I just think that there's a side of me also that loves dick. I love Woo! dick. There's, I love dick. There's a side of me that loves dick. I, the inside. But I, <laughs> I love both, so I'm a bisexual. So people always assume, oh, if you're bisexual, you must love a three-way. And I do not. It's very busy. I especially don't like a three-way between a man and a woman because I feel like I'm constantly switching between a PC and a Mac. I just want one operating system to work with. If, uh, if I had a three-way, I would really prefer to have a three-way. Here comes the police coming for the gay people. They're coming for us early before the election. He's going to try to steal the election, and then we're going to all be in a camp together. Although it would be kind of cute to be in a camp together. Um, it would be fun. We could have our own sort of like makeshift drag race. Ooh, there's a fire. They're really coming for us. This is homophobic. You're disrupting a gay event. Somebody's ODing outside. <laughs> Don't take the brown acid. <laughs> it's um do you like three ways? Yeah. Three ways? If I had a three way, I would like a three way between myself and two other women. That's a great three way. But you almost always end up starting a band. <laughs> That's how uh we got Boy Genius. So uh, just be aware that's gonna happen. Um, or I, if I had a three-way, I would like a three-way with two other men. That's, that's a Mother's Day special. That's what I like to call queen for a day. That's a really great one. You know, you get to put your feet up and have them do all the work. But it's always fun to be with men who haven't been sexual in front of another man before. They get scared that if they touch, it's gay. So they just pick the holes farthest away from each other. So you end up sucking a dick and getting fucked up the ass at the same time. Is ABC News covering that? <laughs> so glad that we made National Coming Out Day a holiday. No, I, um, I love getting fucked up the ass and sucking a dick at the same time. That is called a spit roast. I love a spit roast. Because I'm Korean. And we love barbecue. So, we only have a little bit of time before the election. You know, we gotta protect our gay rights. Our gay rights are like being taken away. But, like, it's so weird, all these politicians get so mad about things that I don't understand. They're like so mad, like, my, my pronouns are patriot. <laughs> that is a noun. <laughs> you should be reading books instead of burning them. <laughs> I mean, I love a they, them. Like, I have never been quite feminine or masculine, so I am very gender fluid as I am. I don't think that I would change my pronouns, though, because I'm too old, I'll fucking forget. <laughs> Who's them? <laughs> Who's they? We're still gonna eat at five, though, right? <laughs> we need to protect, we need to protect drag queens, mostly. I think this is like the main thing that I'm going for. I mean, drag queens are a fucking right. You know, they are, they are so important to me, and I just, I can't imagine a world without them. And they're trying to legislate drag out of existence, like they're trying to legislate trans people out of existence. It's so wrong. And I just, I don't get it. Like, drag is so important, and drag queens are not harming children. You know, if we want to talk about what's harming children, the fucking Catholic Church is harming children. Like, let's get it fucking straight. Maz is a Maz honey. Like, these Christians get so mad about drag when Jesus Christ himself is wearing a full-length gown and a duster from Chico's. It's part of the Golden Girls collection. It's just...
just so weird. Like, I, I don't understand where where it all started to go wrong with these people. Like, they just started to attack drag and attack uh, trans people and to attack, like, trans rights and all this stuff. It just is so, such a weird thing to, like, go and attack. I don't get it. But I think what we have to do uh, is really protect young people, like, protect young queer kids, protect young trans kids and non-binary kids. And the way that we do that as gay adults is we have to look happy all the time. <laughs> because gay kids, they see you and they realize that if I can grow up, maybe I can be happy like that person. You are proof that they'll survive, you know? So you have to fucking look happy. Even if you're really unhappy, just fucking hold your partner's hand even if you fucking hate them, just dig your nails into their fucking palm. Like even if you want to snap that CPAP machine off their face every night, you gotta look happy for the children. Dykey's face. She really does. Like every time I see her on TV, I'm like, is this a new season of True Detective? Because she is like, she is the most dykey face. She makes me so mad. I want to, I want to strap one on on top her. And that is saying a lot, because I have a bad back and I can't top anybody. But I, I would. I would top her. I would top uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Oh yeah, I would fuck that eye right back into place. They make me so sick. We gotta protect our rights, protect our, our bodies. I, I mean, like, the, the whole thing about abortion makes me so angry too. Like, they're trying to take away, away abortion rights. We have to have abortion rights. We have to have, I've had four abortions, which is a lot for a lesbian. Um, the first time I had an abortion, well, the first time I got pregnant, I was like, it was so weird because I never thought I could get pregnant because I was only having sex with women. And if you're gay and having sex with just women, like sex is 100% entertainment. Or like if you need a ride. Or something. You know, like, it's just such a weird thing to me that straight people nut and then make something out of the nut. Like, ugh, that's fucking disgusting. But I, um, I got pregnant because I have a good pussy. And, yeah, I do. I, I know I have a good pussy because I have mental illness. So that's one of the symptoms. And when you have a good pussy, dick just gets in there. Like, it's like black mold. I don't know how it got in there. And so I got pregnant, and it was so weird. I didn't, the way that I found out I got pregnant is I did a bunch of acid. And I was high on the acid, and I was like, oh shit, there, there's someone in here. So I had an abortion, um, you know, the, the, the facility where like, they kept getting protesters. You know, the reception was like, okay, when you come, come in for your procedure, I'm just warning you there might be protesters at your procedure. I'm like, oh, I hope there's protesters. I wish someone would try to talk me out of having an abortion. You're a murderer! Actually, I've had more than three, so technically, I'm a serial killer. Yeah. My favorite abortion that I ever had. <laughs> Five stars, seriously. This was my favorite. It was a procedure called a menstrual extraction where they get a straw and they just suck it out like a... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had boba? <laughs> All right. I love you. Happy coming out day. I was a cisgender heterosexual female. I think I'm bisexual for Margaret Cho. <laughs>